Hey everybody, Sam here. And Angela, and welcome to our channel. Welcome to the next part of the workshop build. Again, whether it be a workshop for a Green Acre Homestead or the new home of Samcraft, this is part two of that video. I have my lovely assistant here again today. She wasn't with me with the foundation <laughs> part. That was a solo trip, and that, that was, was rough. Okay. That was okay. <laughs> yeah, well, nobody was having fun that day. If you've not seen that video, that's where this whole project kicks off. There's a link to it down below, so make sure you check that out. And, you know, Misery loves company, so I'd like to see you over there. <laughs> Otherwise, what do we have for them today? So today we are going to frame out the floor and put down the plywood. Getting official. Woo! -hoo. Let's go! We are ready to go ahead and start framing up the floor of this building. For framing, I'm using treated 2x6 lumber, about 12 footers. They're going to get cut down to 11 foot 9 inches to give me 12 feet overall once the rim joists or band joists are put in place. What I'm going to do now is cut them all to length here, right where they are, where they got dropped off by the truck, because it's easier to cut them here, and once they're done, take them over, and they're at final length over there on the workshop base. It's just gonna be easier, so that's what we're we'll gonna do now. Cutting 16 of them at 11 foot 9 inches. I have all of the floor joists cut to their length and I have them roughly spaced out, just really just placed out here on the skids. I'm going to go and talk about a couple of things as we frame up this floor and we do all of our attachments and stuff. I'm using 2x6s for this floor structure, which should be plenty strong enough for my intended uses. A lot of times storage buildings will be framed out of 2x4s and that's not enough. In my book, for this kind of a workshop, you want something beefier than 2x4s. Now for storage or something that you're not really going to be in much and it's not 12 feet wide, I guess 2x4s will be okay, but I would say at the minimum they should be 12 inch on center. Since I'm using 2x6s, I'm going to space these out 16 inches on center, which is perfectly fine. I have plenty of support below them since I did four skids. The maximum span on that 2x6 is around 3 feet 2 inches, so that's plenty fine. For what I'll be doing, it's not going to be any problem. It's plenty strong enough and it shouldn't be bouncy because I don't like bouncy floors. What I'm doing next is going through every single floor joist and looking for the crown of the board. What the crown of the board is, is you want to see if it's kind of like a rainbow. You want the rainbows facing up. And the reason you want that is over time as the weight pushes on that joist, it'll make it flatter and it will not be saggy. If it looks like an upside down rainbow or a smiley face, you go to attach your floor, it's only going to get worse over time. So you always want to make sure you do your crowns to the top or your rainbows or frowny faces, however you want to think about it. That's what you want to do with your floor joists. And so while this looks like kind of a weird step or something that, I don't know, going to make a big difference over time, yes, it will. As the lumber dries and moves and just ages, it will make a big difference. With our crowns done and marked, I marked a little C on the top of all of them in case we move them, they fall over, we know which one's which. We now start fastening things together. For that, I'm going to be using my Pazload Cordless Framing Nailer. This is what we use when we did our roof over project. And 
I think that's the last time this thing's been used. So it's one of those specialty tools that you really only use when you need it, but when you need it, you're glad to use it. So I have our little battery charged up. This goes in here on this side, because this thing does use electricity as far as igniting the cylinder, but for the main boom factor, it uses these gas cylinders. So it's pretty much like a single cylinder gas engine in here that literally pumps air fuel in. When you pull the trigger, it sparks, ignites, and blows a plunger down and shoots a nail in your material. To load the cylinder, pull this back, drop your fuel in, that goes down, and you're done. All right, let's go ahead and load this thing up with nails and start framing this floor together. That's gonna be as simple as my lovely assistant grabbing one end of this ledger board, band board, rim joist, I forget what I'm calling it, but that board, and then I'll walk and work my way down from here over, lining the joists up with my marks and shooting three to four nails in a piece. As for nails, we're using hot dip galvanized three inch long ring shake nails. I marked them. <laughs> yeah. If I'll go down where you are to help yeah. line them up. As you can see, we've got a couple of sheets of plywood here. I'm using plywood as giant squares. I know they're rectangles, but like framing mathematical square to make sure the corners of the floor are 90 degrees and the edges are perpendicular. I don't know, square. So I'm gonna fit around with this a little bit longer. It's just a hair bit off, but basically what I'm doing is kind of shimmying the frame around till everything matches and all the size and edges are correct with the plywood. Cause plywood is 90 degree corners. So it works great for giant squares. And off camera, Elijah came over and I was like, hey, let's go ahead and uh, see if we can tweak this thing a little bit better. We got out the larger tape measure. We measured from corner to corner, measured diagonals, and we got the whole flooring squared up. So it's correct. Measured from corner to corner, it's dead on. Now, I will go through and make sure my joists are spaced correctly. 
mark on the skid with some pencil line in case I bump them or the kids bump them and they move. And then I'm gonna go back with the nail gun and I will toenail, which means going in at an angle, all of the joists to the skid. They'll get probably four nails a piece at every single joint. So we'll do that. Should have enough daylight for that, but we'll keep working and work until dark because that's what I do. Welcome to the next day. It is early in the morning and I'm ready to start working on this thing again. I have a sledgehammer and a piece of wood. Why? Because last night, as I was looking at a couple of pictures that I took to show friends and family of, look what I did. I noticed some of the blocks were not exactly perfectly aligned like I liked. So I want to take the time to just kind of nudge them over, make them pretty, and then we'll continue building. I know at this point, it's the best time because it's only going to get heavier from here. So yes, Sam's OCD is kicking in, but I'm going to tweak some of these blocks, make sure they look pretty, and then we'll go ahead with doing the floor framing next. Or, you mean covering it all up, what you're doing? Yeah, yeah. We'll spend some time doing some work, and then we'll cover that up. Okay. Wow. I, yeah, I'm serious. It's just me being super picky. <laughs> Okay, that's acceptable. We can now move on to the next level. <laughs> we are ready to go ahead and put the plywood decking now. For comparison, these are the three inch nails that I use for the framing, and these are the two and three eighths nails I'm gonna be using for the plywood decking. I'm gonna be using my Pazload nail gun for the rest of this plywood as well. This tool is so handy, especially out here where we're kind of running off grid. Well, no, we really are running off grid. We have solar panels and stuff. I don't have an air compressor, don't have air hose to deal with. It's really nice to have the pads load gun to use for all of this stuff. These are two and three eighths inch nails. They are galvanized ring shank as well. You don't necessarily have to have galvanized ring shank nails for flooring in this application, but since this will be exposed to the elements, since this is gonna be a workshop, that's what I'm doing. So that's why Sam went and got galvanized instead of the non-galvanized regular nails. All right, I'm gonna load up my pass load nailer. We're gonna go over there and we're gonna start nailing down the plywood to build the official floor. Well, we are on the new floor. We are. And it is not jiggly or wiggly. It is not. It is very sturdy. <laughs> Off camera, I was having Angela and Isaac kind of hopscotch and run around and jump and things. And I was sitting on one end with my eyes closed, trying to feel the earth. And there was no wiggle shakes or anything, which is awesome. Which probably sounds really weird, but my current workshop, there is. So that's something I was testing with this one. No doubt the floor stability is in part because of the foundation. So it was worth all the pain and annoyances to do that. I wasn't here for that part, so it's okay to say yes. It yeah. was. Yeah. <laughs> I can say now, yes, that was totally worth it. It was totally, totally worth that. As far as framing up the floor, I don't think I could have really asked for an easier, happy experience. I don't know. I would say, again, in part, that's probably from the pads load. Uh-huh. The nail gun. Yeah. Um, because otherwise, every other workshop and stuff we've put together we've used screws mm -hmm. 
and you have to take time to get it out and put it on and screw it in and this one's just like pow 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 let's go yeah yeah it is more expensive to buy a tool such as the cordless framing nailer but that's a, a buy once cry once kind of mentality now that the tool has been purchased the amount of speed that it gives us as we do any kind of project like this and the amount of less wear and tear on me or strain or whatever i mean it's worth it for sure mm -hmm. now given if you're not the type to really do diy stuff like us maybe it's not the thing for you but for us i think it's a good deal one of the cool things i saw while running the camera is sam was able to put one down like carry the plywood over and completely nail it in in like three minutes that would have taken Her. like 15 <laughs> or 20 if we had been using screws and stuff yeah. so it was like wow yeah it's definitely i mean you can see why professional construction crews use tools of this style it's faster it's portable and yeah win 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 <laughs> so as far as the flooring there may be some of you wondering why i chose to do plywood instead of osb um, there were two reasons one the price believe it or not sanded three quarter inch plywood is cheaper than tongue and groove three quarter inch equivalent osb so that's that uh, the second reason is because this is true four foot by eight foot sheets they are not tongue and groove which means when they're tongue and groove they're undersized so they're not tongue and groove means all the joints line up perfectly it's a lot cleaner prettier looking floor and i don't have any kind of weird shortcomings on the ends because you know the eighth inch has transitioned across the floor to the other side Ugh. that always drove me crazy when i did osb flooring in my other workshop and so i didn't want to do that with this one that also being said plywood is generally considered stronger than osb however it is not as weather rated as osb so there's one thing we're concerned about with this floor now being wide open to the elements we don't want it to get rain on a lot and kind of pucker and delaminate or have problems there so it's definitely go time from here forward or we need to come up with a solution to cover and protect the floor so that it's safe while we finish building this project well guys thanks for coming along as we framed and decked the floor for sam's workshop if you have any questions or comments please leave them below and otherwise we'll see you guys next time on one of our homesteads see you bye down and shoots a nail in your material that was not supposed to come off Is there anything else, sir? I'm waiting for you to look at the camera. Oh. <laughs> I bought 12 footers. They're gonna cut, cut. Don't crinkle your granola bar there. <laughs> I meant to do that. Yep, air filter looks good. Gosh. Oh, come on. For real. And you know, misery loves company, so I'd like to see you over there. <laughs> Otherwise, what do we got for drum? Tip, 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 tip. Yep. No, I've got it now. I just had to walk over. Pretty much. And otherwise, we'll see you guys next time on one of our homesteads. See ya. Bye. You said it was my workshop that time. Yeah. Of course, that whole... It's my soap shop. That whole our workshop thing was probably that first take that we lost. It might have been.